Thank you guys. This has been um, a great opportunity for me. I'm actually really very honored to be here to talk to you guys. Um, a lot of what I'm going to talk about today is a passion that I've pursued for uh, forever. Uh, since I've been a um, pharmacist and have worked in the healthcare field, one of the things that really drives a lot of what I do is patient care and how can we actually create programs to improve patient care. So for the first half of my talk today, I'm really going to talk about the problem that we face in healthcare, which is medication non-adherence. And then the latter half of my presentation, I'm going to talk about a solution that we created right here in Toledo, Ohio, that really has changed the landscape completely. We have actually the Toledo leading the nation right now in terms of overcoming the problem that we call medication non-adherence. So, um, could we get it to print yeah. the slideshow? Right. There we go. Thank you. So, as healthcare providers, we often are working under the auspices of Hippocrates, which says, first do no harm. And so everything that we do as healthcare providers, we really are um, working towards making sure that our patients are not harmed in any which way. Yet when it comes to patients, what really fascinates me is we actually make sure that our patients go through a large number of hoops and challenges before they can jump over the hump and really get to start getting better and improving the quality of life. And so a lot of times when I'm asked to compare what our patients have to go through, I compare it to the American Ninja Warrior. So for those of you that are fans of the show or have ever watched the show, you know how crazy things can get and it's really, really challenging. But our system, our healthcare system, really is structured in a way in which our patients essentially have to go through a large number of hoops while they're sick, while they're trying to get better in order for them to live happy, productive lives while also keeping the cost of, for themselves and also the healthcare system at a minimum. And so what we actually really find is how can we make a change to improve patient care? And the answer to that is by targeting problems such as medication non-adherence. But before we talk about medication non-adherence, it's important to sort of take a step back and think about what the patient's journey might essentially be. So if you want to imagine you know, a patient who um, falls sick and now they've come down with the flu, it's flu season coming around the corner here, and so they're really sick, they're congested. Um, we are not living in the world anymore where the doctors used to make house calls. Now we are asking this patient who is sick and really wants to do nothing better but cuddle up in bed to pick up the phone, call the doctor's office, and try to get an appointment, right? And so if they're lucky, after waiting for 20 minutes on hold, they probably get to speak to someone that then sets up an appointment for them. And then this patient will now have to make that trip to the doctor's office. And after waiting for maybe like an hour, if they're lucky, maybe half an hour, they meet somebody like this. Maybe he's a really good doctor, takes the time to actually find out what problems this patient faces, or if they really aren't lucky enough, they may find this guy, or maybe not, they may not find this guy. But somehow there's a diagnosis. What baffles me every single time is the toll order we have our physicians go through. If you really think about it, each physician encounter with a patient ranges roughly about 12 to 15 minutes. And so in 12 to 15 minutes, the doctor has to come in, empathize with the patient, be able to listen to their symptoms, do any sort of assessment that they need to, come up with a diagnosis, diagnose the patient, write a prescription, and complete all the paperwork all in that 12 to 15 minute time frame. And for the most part, our doctors do a wonderful job trying to accomplish this huge challenge we have for them. But the patient journey doesn't end there. The next step for the patient is to go to the pharmacy to pick up their medication. If they're lucky, they go through a drive through because the pharmacy already has the script ready for them, the medication ready for them. Or if they have questions, they may actually wait in line and usually lines at the pharmacies are really, really lengthy. And so we see a lot of patients not spending the time to talk to the pharmacist because they are not feeling well, they wanna go back home and really start taking the medication to get better. Well, for the most part, this is what we see with patients if they are living good, healthy, productive lives, an acute condition or an acute problem they may encounter continues on maybe a couple times during the course of the year. However, a large majority of the patients that we treat 
are not patients that have acute conditions. We're treating patients that have chronic conditions like diabetes, hypertension, asthma, cancer. And so when we look at patients for the vast majority of the journey of a patient who has a chronic condition, we're asking them to go through the cycle over and over and over again. And so another interesting trend that we have noticed apart from making sure that our patients are getting better, we have noticed that patients are changing, our diagnoses are changing. Back in the 1980s, the typical patient looked like somebody like this, where you had this individual who was probably about in his 60s or 70s. A lot of times they were in assisted living facilities or they actually had a caregiver or a care provider, mainly a nurse or a nurse practitioner that was with them 24 seven. So they really knew what was going on with the patient. What we saw happening right in the 90s was we ended up with patients that were in their 50s that were starting to get diagnosed with chronic conditions. Now, so these are patients that are not yet retired. They're still working They're towards the tail end of their employment. Well, the past couple of decades, we noticed a very interesting trend. We had a lot of patients that were yet a lot younger that were diagnosed with chronic conditions. So much so that a few years ago, I was in Tennessee and working with a large employer group, and it surprised me. There were a large number of employees. The average age for this employer group was 35 to 45 years of age, and it was very interesting. These people that formed the employer group essentially were taking anywhere from five to seven medications per year for chronic conditions. That's a large number of medications for people that are actually working. So think about your dad, your mom, somebody at that age range that's taking a large number of those medications and they have to do that on a yearly basis. What we end up seeing is 50% of the world's population is diagnosed with a chronic condition. And right here in the US, in the next four years, the diagnosis for chronic diseases is going to increase by 57%. That's a huge problem for us, and it's already starting to have its effect. One of the other statistics that we need to really be familiar with is if you think back to 1989, we dispensed in America about 700 million prescriptions. The last couple of years, the number of prescriptions we have dispensed is 4 billion. That's six times the number that we actually dispensed in 1989. And so it makes sense. A lot more people are getting diagnosed with chronic conditions. There's a lot of prescription medications that are being dispensed. And you would think that patients are actually going to take their medication so that they get better and lead much more productive lives. But that's not what we see. What we end up seeing is a number like this. We have three out of four Americans that are not taking their prescription medications like they have been prescribed by the doctor. And so we do have some serious consequences as a result of this. A lot of these patients are essentially hospitalized. They meet untimely deaths. Or if you look at the economics associated with medication non-adherence, this costs us here in the United States close to $300 billion just because our patients are not adherent with their medications. It's a problem that we really need to address, but in order to look at why this problem exists or what are some of the barriers associated with the problem, we want to sort of look at the various aspects of a patient taking their medication and what essentially poses a barrier to them. In the interest of time, I've really uh, shortened the number of barriers and synthesized it into just a few targeted barriers. So if you look at a condition-related barrier, this is when a patient is essentially um, diagnosed with, let's say, high blood pressure. It's um, the patient gets a medication, they go back home, they start taking the medication. High blood pressure is one of those disease states where you don't really know how the medication is doing, whether you're feeling good, whether you're not feeling good, unless you actually go in and measure your blood pressure. What ends up happening is we notice patients a number of times will go back home and for some reason they start feeling better. Maybe it's the placebo effect or they truly do start feeling better. And without letting their physician know, they decide to stop taking the pill. I call it the I don't feel ill, so I don't want to take the pill syndrome. And a large number of our patients do that, and therefore they become non adherent. We also notice that, in general, we send our patients home with a bottle that looks like this, which has a large number of side effects listed on it. It surprises me every single time, despite sending our patients back home with these the side effects listed, our patients actually end up taking the medications. But we do encounter patients that 
end up with side effects. And that's just normal and natural because they are taking medications that have a large number of side effects. Well, if a patient was informed ahead of time what they could do to combat the side effect, we would see adherence rates increase. However, what essentially happens is a large number of these patients don't know how to overcome the side effects. And so they do not like the side effects, they don't want to experience them, and so they stop taking either that medication or a much more serious consequence, they stop taking all the medications that they have put on because they don't know which medication is causing the problem. We also noticed that over the years, since our population has essentially started getting younger, we have in a way not changed our way of dealing with patients in the, as healthcare providers. So what we notice is we get patients that are now very empowered with their lives. These are your parents' age. These are people that are in their 40s, 30s, that live very productive lives. They're very busy. Yet when it comes to medication taking behaviors, they don't know a lot about their medications themselves because we've not really ed educated or informed them about the medications. We also notice a large number of patients when they actually are dispensed these medications, they have bottles that look very much like this. And unfortunately, it's not a good memory aid for them or it doesn't tell them how many times they've actually taken their medication during the course of the day. And so what we see a lot of times is patients essentially will overdose because they think that they haven't taken their medication. So they go back to the medicine cabinet and take the same pill twice or thrice during the course of the day or they may underdose because they just think they've taken the medication and they don't take it for the rest of the day when indeed they had not taken the medication to start out with. We notice that access is another problem. We notice that patients who on average are taking anywhere from five to 12 medications for chronic conditions have to make about five trips to the pharmacy. If they take five trips to the pharmacy, a lot of times these patients don't want to do that because they don't have the time or they don't want to waste money on gas or a separate trip. So a lot of them will piggyback on trips. And so what it ends up happening is a patient will essentially take their first medication, they run out of the second and the third medication, they wait till they're running out of the third or the fourth medication and then make the trip to the pharmacy. And by that time, they've already been out of two of their medications for about a week or so. And so we again see intermittent adherence with their medications. We notice that money is a big problem. Health insurance gaps also provide or prevent patients from getting medications that they can take on a timely basis. And lastly, we see patients that just say we don't have enough time to go to the pharmacy. We lead busy, active lives and we just cannot make it the time to go to the pharmacy. So if you have to funnel it down to three fundamental barriers, it comes down to complexity of the regimen, lack of knowledge about the disease states or the medications that the patients are taking, and the last barrier, which is inaccessibility of these medications to our patients. We looked around the country while we were trying to address this these problems. And one of the things that I have worked the past decade on is to identify various providers. So we worked with national organizations, we worked with physician groups, pharmacy groups, uh, nurse practitioner groups to identify systems in which we would be able to overcome these barriers. And we ended up finding the solution to these barriers in the pharmacy and the pharmacist being the solution to the barriers. So if you think about it, if a patient actually has to make five trips to the pharmacy each month, that means they're more likely to see their pharmacist a lot more times than they're seeing their physician. Most patients will see their pharmacist an average of 12 times during the course of the year, whereas they see their physician probably about a couple times during the course of the year. Uh, we also notice that the pharmacist is very often referred to as the doctor on the bench because they go to pharmacy school for six years, earn a doctorate degree, and they learn everything about medications, yet a lot of times they're very underutilized and they don't really get a chance to talk to patients about their medications. So we came up with this. We came up with a sea of solutions. We decided that we would use the pharmacy and the pharmacist team to essentially simplify the medication regimen for the patients, educate the patient, provide them knowledge, and make the medications more accessible. How were we going to do this? Well, we had 
services in place. We put together an adherence packaging system where there is a machine that packages all the patient's medication so that they can take it for the whole week or the whole month. They actually are organized. The pharmacist checks these and they are able to be provided to the patient so that the patient, when they need to take the medication during the course of the day, can get into this blister, take the medications, now knows that they have already taken the medication so they're not over or under dosing. We also notice that when we look at um, providing knowledge to patients, medication therapy management services where the patient is sitting down with the pharmacist and the pharmacist talks about all the patient's medications is a very powerful tool to help improve the outcomes of patients. In fact, medication adherence has been found to give us a 1 to 12 uh, return on investment, meaning for every $1 that we invest in medication therapy management, we can save $12 from the healthcare system and also from the patient that is participating in these services. We also noticed that a system called refill synchronization is very, very powerful because we can actually get the patient's medications synchronized so that they're picking up the medications only once during the course of the month as opposed to five separate trips to the pharmacy. And we also noticed that in all, if a patient definitely doesn't want to get up and doesn't feel like they want to make a trip to the pharmacy, we can have medications delivered to their doorstep. And so when we looked at this system and these services, various parts of the country were offering an aspect of these services. However, they were not all under one roof and they were not all provided to patients. And so what we decided we were going to do is right here in Toledo, we worked with various members of the community and we created the very first adherence pharmacy right here in Toledo. This adherence pharmacy helps patients coming to the pharmacy by helping them sit down with a patient um, who has a condition, will probably come in, work with the caregiver, work with the pharmacist, and be able to talk to the pharmacist and the staff about their medications, about the therapy. They'll be able to get their medications in those blister packs, and they will also be able to seek the services of delivery if they did not really want to spend time coming to the pharmacy and picking up the medications. What we saw was very, very fascinating to us. We ended up with a high success rate. We saw 97% adherence rates, which are very, very unusual. Um, there is no literature that's currently published that has that high level of adherence rates. We also saw every patient that came to the pharmacy that went through the adherence pharmacy state that they actually were able to reach their clinical goals and they were also able to get to a certain point where they were staying out of the hospital, staying out of the ER. Those are things that are very, very important for, from a healthcare standpoint. It minimizes costs while improving patients' outcomes. So as we move to the next step right here in Toledo, as we lead the nation towards changing and improving care by tackling medication non-adherence, I want you to leave you with this saying by Helen Keller, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. Please join me in this mission to stomp out medication non-adherence. Maybe you, a member of your family, or the member of your community might really benefit from knowing about the existence of adherence pharmacy and being able to essentially use the services. Thank you again so much for your time. I appreciate it.